This tropical African country is set at the equator but has snow on top of its highest mountain, the Ruenzori. Uganda boasts of temperate climate and picturesque islands. It also harbors the world's second largest freshwater lake, the Victoria, which is also the source of the world's second longest river, the Nile. These attractions, as well as its ancient famous interlacustrine kingdoms, have been an exploration destination since legends like Ibn Battuta, John Huntington Speak, and Henry Morton Stanley started the flood. Britain's famous wartime Prime Minister, Sir Winston Churchill, once proclaimed it as the Pearl of Africa in his book, My African Journey. The gateway into the country is Entebbe town. When one is coming in from the skies to land at Entebbe airport, one is given a teaser of what to expect of this beautiful country. There is little wonder that this picturesque town was once the seat of the colonial government. From the capital, the country is split into five major destinations. The east, the north, the west, the central and the islands. Each one a unique experience in itself. Traveling eastwards, one comes across the source of the River Nile at a place called Jinja. This is where Africa's longest river begins its journey to the Mediterranean Sea in Egypt. There are boat rides on the Nile, taking in the beautiful landscapes on the banks of the river. There are rapids further downstream, which are a major destination for white water rafters at Wujagali. At the municipal town of Tororo, one sees the Tororo rock, an irregular outgrowth from the earth, which is a symbol of Uganda's strange relief features on the eastern axis. However, the Tororo rock is quickly dwarfed by the Elgon Mountains as one goes further east. The Elgon Mountains, complete with wild animals, are a popular destination for nature lovers. The Bama Saba people who live on the mountains add a colorful backdrop to the scenic beauty found there. They grow bananas as a staple food and eat bamboo shoots in a vegetable delicacy known as Kamalewa. They also grow one of the world's best coffee brands, known as Arabica coffee. This type of coffee is only found in a few places in the world, which include the Elgon Mountains and the highlands of Ethiopia. Tourists with an interest in coffee production visit this area for further knowledge and research on how coffee makes its way from the earth to the consumer's cup. Further on, along this eastern circuit, you will encounter evidence of the early history of mankind on the Nyeru Rock in Kumi. The people who now live there are known as the Iteso, a cattle-keeping people. The east is a journey into African heritage. Moving more northeastwards, one encounters the Karamajong people whose passion for cattle is very intense. They live in Manyatas, a collection of huts in an enclosure. In this region, recent paleontological excavations have revealed very early evidence of mankind. The visitor will also come across the Chidepo Valley National Park, a semi-desert savanna with a wide range of rare animal species. It is one of the many national parks in the country. Another high-altitude mountain, the Moroto, is found here. It is a favorite destination for mountain climbers. The Karamajong excursion is a rare tourist journey where one is often alone to ponder and wonder at Mother Nature in her most native form.
the western part of Uganda is one beautiful wonderland. There are golden grasslands. They are grazed by the graceful Ankole cattle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Green tea estates in temperate climates. Undulating hills with terraced gardens. Thick tropical rainforests. And a snow picked mountain, the Rezoris. A journey to the west is an enchanting trip in flora and fauna. There are game parks, game reserves and forest reserves in this region. Two and a half hours away from Kampala, one begins to see the wild animals. Lake Mburu National Park is home to the zebra, that beautiful horse-like animal, so tasty to the lion. There are also numerous antelopes and bugs. Going more southwestwards, one will end up in the Mgahinga Mountain Gorilla National Park. And here you will climb the Mgahinga Mountain Ranges, which will be a delightful physical exercise and a walk through varieties of beautiful plants growing in a very cool environment. But the biggest trophy here is the mountain gorilla. Many visitors here come to track the rare mountain gorilla, which is found only in this part of the world. Veering northwestwards is windy impenetrable rainforest, another habitat of a few remaining mountain gorillas. It is a totally different experience here. President of Uganda, Yori Museveni, led a visual expedition of the CNN into this area to showcase the world's few remaining mountain gorillas, among other things. This placed the world's attention on the windy, impenetrable rainforest and exposed another side of Uganda to the rest of the world. Gorilla trackers have called this a very unforgettable experience. In southwestern Uganda, we come to Lake Bunyonyi, Uganda's deepest lake. A boat ride on the lake is an unforgettable experience. A picturesque and colorful sight of terraced Jigezi hills give the visitor a sense of living of a lifetime dream of encountering a perfect terrestrial beauty. Bird watching on the shores of the lake is a bonus for the visitor. Going on more northern, one passes through villages kiriographed with banana plantations and longhorn cattle. Within this backdrop are beautiful crater lakes, a result of early earth movements and volcanic activity. One can take a boat ride or sit by the banks of one of these lakes, which will bring forth an immediate sublime feeling. One other water mass here is the Lake Katwe, a salt excavation site that dates back thousands of years. It is evidence of a great salt industry and trade that stretched all over the entire interlacustrian region. Further downfield, one comes across Lake George and Lake Edward. Two azure large peaceful waters separated by the Kazinga Channel. Here one can go fishing on a canoe, which is the main occupation of the people who live around the lakes. It is at the edge of these waters that one enters Uganda's second biggest national park, 
the Queen Elizabeth National Park. Once inside the park, the huge array of animal species will parade before you in their natural casts, some stopping to stare at the intruder with curiosity. The Queen Elizabeth is a majestic expression of the meaning of the word safari, that Swahili word now adapted by the English language to mean travel. At Mueya Safari Lodge, you will rest and eat like a royal as the beauty of Africa unfolds in front of you. Going on more and westward, you'll cross the equator once again and face the Rensuri mountain ranges. When the early explorers were told of a mountain with snow at the top, they put it down to native nonsense, but history has absorbed them. Thousands of mountain climbers have made their way to the Margarita Peak, where it is always snow, as in the polar regions of the world. Making one's way to the top is a feat in itself. Going through a breathtaking hazardous terrain of numerous ecosystems which goes through the dense mountain forest to the snow-covered peaks. Along the trail, one will see unique vegetations, glacier river primates, and wonder features such as gorges. It is like a summary of the earth here, and this is what has attracted famous people to the Rezoris. One of them, the Italian Duke of Abruzzi, took photographs in 1906 and wrote a book that was to make the Ruenzoris world famous. But the Ruenzoris did not have to be announced to be famous because it is the third tallest mountain in Africa. At its foothills is a vast expanse of natural rainforest, complete with chimpanzees, monkeys and baboons. There are also many varieties of birds. It is a good destination for bird watching, chimpanzee tracking and community walks. Still in the west, one can go on to reach the Semlike River, a meandering wonder. And then there are the Sempire Hot Springs, a two acre of bubbling steam from underneath the earth. People come here from near and far to bath in the healing steam of the hot springs. Seven miles from here live the Batwa, a three feet tall people whose habitat is the dense tropical forest. They are a subject of great interest to anthropology.